by the way there you go so it's getting recorded so um, let's start so what is a standard way of writing uh, a user interface so a user interface is written like this um, when you have standard standard input output dot h obviously we're gonna need that uh, define um, anybody remembers how it was CRT schmiggly dinghy secure CRT thingy uh, let me just stop um, it's gonna tell me when it's when uh, and I'm gonna use it so in here so I have a main over here and in this main I want to have uh, returns here and I want in this main I want to have um, a text user interface running so when you are looking at a text user interface how things usually work you display user a menu user selects something out of that menu to do something and then you do whatever the user selects and you redisplay the menu so this is how all the user interfaces work and the structure for it is so simple so the very first thing that you need over there is, is a menu that returns you an option what the user says and that's it that's all you need to do so for your menu what you create is something like this integer menu obviously in here you're gonna have some uh, uh, printf some options to be displayed so I don't know I'm gonna say over here one option one option one and then two uh, option two three and then go to new line I can actually do it like this so so it looks nicer <coughs> option two and then I'm gonna go three option three and then after that is done you uh, show them uh, a place or and obviously you have to give them a way to get out of your program so probably zero exit something exit and then after showing all these things you gotta let them select the option that they have and that's the prompt so that becomes your menu the menu that you're actually showing to your uh, to your user and in here you're gonna return uh, whatever option they're gonna return so that's gonna be return in here I'm gonna say I don't know for the this is a mock I'm just gonna put one <clears throat> so in here if I say uh, uh, menu uh, integer selection and in here I'm gonna say select is set to menu And in here, I'm going to say printf a percent D. You have selected percent D. And I go to new line and I put over here the selection. So <clears throat> running this program, you know exactly what's going to happen. It's not a, it's a very simple program. So let me just run it. Run it. going on here doesn't want to compile view solution explorer solution explorer oh I opened the wrong thing X actually not X let me z save it I opened the wrong thing my apologies let me close it I wanted to open VCX project. I opened the file my, by mistake. <clears throat> Instead of project, I opened the file. So yeah. So now let's add the uh, um, existing item. Add existing item, and that's PRG. Let's add these things just in case if we need them. And I'm gonna put this one over here. So there you go. So now I have. So now let's run it. So the menu is there 
now it comes and now it comes in here it calls the menu and as you see it's it, it obviously I didn't receive anything but value one is returned so it says you have selected one um, are we okay down to this point wait 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 are we okay with this <laughs> Oh, thank you, Emily. I just saw Emily put CRT secure warnings over this. So in here, I'm going to say <laughs> define. There you go. All right. So uh, Luam and Azad, you said, no, we are not OK. Explain why. What are we not OK with? Please activate your microphone and let me know. Uh, so why the at the end it printed you have selected one? Because I returned one in here. It's just a mock-up. I didn't get anything from user yet. Ah, got it. Got I returned. So this this is how you program. First you create a mock-up, then you make it actually work, right? Like testing, yeah? Yeah, just testing. Just I wanted to see if my menu looks good. <laughs> ah, got it. I haven't gotten anything from user yet, so <laughs> that's why. Okay? Got it. Loam, are we okay? And Azza, thank you for the question. This. Pardon me? I meant to click on yes instead. Oh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, but Aza, thanks for the question. So now, now in here, now that it looks good, I need to actually get the user's thing. Well, we did that in the menu, right? In menu, we had some, uh, actually all of you, I think something that Peter helped you with, you wrote uh, that uh, get in thingy with MM. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, use yours. Let me see. What, how is my get in working over here? So I'm going to first complete my get int over here to actually get the integer and make sure it's only an integer. So I'm going to put percent %c in here and I'm going to say new line, character new line and uh, equals to zero equals to zero and in here I'm going to actually get the new line and in here, I'm going to say, if it is equal to 2, then in here, I'm going to say, if new line is not equal to new line, oh, sorry, is not equal to the character new line, it means they did something wrong. Other than that, else, we are good to go. Okay, so if it is not new null, then I'm going to say printf uh, uh, enter an integer only. Try again. Okay, so that's my message. Because if the next character after the integer is not actually an integer, then uh, it's not a new line. It means they added some garbage after. So, uh, first of all, it is not that one. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to flush the key, too, because I have garbage in there, okay? But if it's done as one, so in here, if it's not equal to two, then that's disaster. It means um, I have to actually um, I have to actually uh, flush the key and say invalid integer and at the end I do not need to have flush key anymore because if it leaves it over here it means the new line was eaten so if it is new line done is one and I'm out and everything is good um, if it is not new line it means they added garbage after the integer and I'm going to flush the key until I get to new line and I'm going to say hey you entered an in invalid integer um, are we okay with this <laughs> And now that I have this get in thingy of mine, I'm going to add another thing over here. Uh, what did you call all of you? Get mm int it was or get int mm? Which one? Somebody answer. Get int mm. Okay, so so int get int minimum and maximum. And I'm going to have integer min, integer max. And you had over here constant character pointer value name if i recall correctly and i'm gonna oh sorry constant character array value name 
so I'm going to use your own thing in here and in here I'm going to say integer val and I'm going to say integer val is equal to get int so I'm going to get an integer first right off the bat and I'm going to say return val and that's going to return my value then I'm going to say do <clears throat> uh, not do actually while uh, that uh, value <clears throat> is less than min or that value is greater than max then it comes in in here and it's going to say printf uh, and I'm going to do percent %d should be l less no um, yeah percent %d should be less than or equal to in here is the value name and then less than or equal to percent %d again um, and I'm gonna say try again again and in here I'm gonna put minimum value name value name and max so and then I'm gonna say val is set to get int again so there you go so I write I wrote get int min, uh, minimum maximum so uh, and I and I give this response to many of you so to so to reuse your code so this get integer gets a foolproof integer in here all I have to do is to validate make sure the value I'm receiving is actually properly set so I'll first set the value to the integer that user enters if that value is less than what is minimum or greater than what is maximum I'm gonna tell them what the value should be try again and get it again and keep going like that I don't need to flush anything because get int does it for me all I need to do is to add this to my utils.h and I'm gonna put it right over here so we know what is what for uh, are we okay with this <laughs> All right, now that I have this beautiful function of mine, I can write my uh, user interface very easily, actually. So I simply include include utils. Actually, I don't need the CRT thingy in here anymore because I don't have a scan of here. So in here, I'm going to say include utils.h. And in here, I'm going to say return get int minimum and maximum the minimum will be zero the maximum will be three because those are my options and in here I, I'm gonna say uh, selection and now I'm gonna try it so now my menu should actually work with a proper selection it returns the value that the user is entering over there so that's gonna be an easy thing to do let's run it and try it so it's going to show the menu as you see it's over here I'm going to put ABC it's going to say embedded integer to try again I'm going to say 3 is my selection now it's going to tell me enter an integer only try again now I'm going to put over here uh, uh, minus 1 it's going to tell me selection should be between 0 and 3 I'm going to put 4 it's going to oh I said 3 anyways I said 3 I should have said place four to see if the other side works so you have selected three is now working so my menu is working beautifully are we okay with this now that I have written this function I need to change this thing to uh, a, 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 an application where actually user keeps doing it so a user interface is always an endless loop that we have to stop if the user decides to stop so what we need to do instead of so this was the stage one that our many work properly the next thing we need to do over here is actually writing a loop so what I need to do over here is to have something like um, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna say integer done is equal to zero and in here I'm gonna say while not done and I'm gonna have a loop so that's my interface 
So it's going to keep going until I stop. Then what do I need to do? Right after this loop, I'm going to show my menu. So I'm going to say selection is equal to uh, menu. So now the menu is being uh, selected over and over and over. So I can test it and run it and see what happens. So in here, I'm going to say if uh, selection is zero, uh, make done zero, just to test it to see if it works or not. Again, testing step by step. I'm not writing the whole thing. Um, set this one to zero, so run it. Uh, control F5. So it just does a loop with the menu. So in here, I'm going to say uh, four. It's going to say bad selection. I'm going to say two. It shows again. I'm going to say three. It shows again. I'm going to say one. It shows again. I do zero and it went again. Selection is equal to zero. Done. Oh, done is one, not zero. <laughs> Done is one. See, I made in my tester program, small tester program, I made the mistake. Done is one, not zero. So let's do it one more time. Build errors. What is my build error? Oh, because it's running. Um, now it's good. Okay, so now if I go one, it goes one. If I go zero, program ends, so it's it's working. So now that the loop works, let's decide what we want to do. Now that the loop works, I'm going to say over here, okay, now I have a menu. Menu is giving me the selection. All I need to do is to say switch to the value of selection. And now I can keep going. I can say case one, break case two break case three break anything else done is one now i can actually show messages over here saying uh printf um, do option one and can other have another printf over here? Printf um, now do option. Okay, option two. So option two is selected. And in here I'm going to say printf option three. Three must be done. And for default, I'm going to say printf Oh, sorry. Goodbye. And thank you for using my useless program. <laughs> program. Okay. And I'm going to go out. So that's my system. So as you see now, the struct desk, the system that you see is a standard way of writing an application. So you show the you you show the menu, you you show the menu, you get the selection. Based on the selection, you do whatever user needs to do. If user needs to select, you break the loop and get out. Very simple. If I run the program now, I have a structure of something that I want to write. So in here, I put minus one. It's going to say it's wrong. I say two. It's going to say option two is selected. I say three. Option three must be done. One. One must be done. And one. Zero. It's going to say goodbye and thank you for using my useless program. So, and this is the structure of every single menu-driven user interface uh, for uh, any program that you have. Uh, are we okay with this? So at any moment that we write any application that needs a menu, now that menu could be, you may, it, it doesn't, yes, uh, Emily, go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So I can. Um, Deepa just mentioned it in the chat. I wanted to ask you, um, what, did you mean to record the session? Because it says it's not recording. Oh, shoot. I forgot to record the session. <laughs> oh, I am recording session. It's recording. 
Uh, and I'm going to record locally. Oh, yes, it's not recording. That's weird. Yeah, it's not recording a big blue button, but it's recording locally. So I got scared, man. Okay, but uh, I have the, the local one and the, the big blue button starts from here. But if you don't like, if, if you don't, if you're seeing this, go watch the YouTube video. <laughs> this is it. Um, thank all right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for letting me know. And thank you, Diva. All right. So that's my... Uh, menu and uh, uh, something that I wanted to tell you because the project comes up the very first thing that you do you need to make the program and you need to make the mock-up program and the mock-up program is written this way so you're gonna create the interface of the program that does nothing literally and then later on as we are progressing through the implementation of the system you're gonna add the make, make the options uh, active as it goes one by one uh, any, uh, are we okay down to this point? All right, so I'm going to pause for a second over here, the recording. Please remind me to, uh, to continue recording after. So, now, ladies and gents, we are having a file inside our directory, and that file is this one, add existing item. It's called student.csv. Okay, and if I uh, open this one, you will see that it's series of student information, which is the student name, the student number, and the GPA value for them. So these are the things that I have for the students. <clears throat> and I want to be able to read the information, add one to this, remove from this, and see how I can actually work with all these things and see how they work. Okay. The very first thing I need to do, I need to create an instance for myself that can hold all these information in one entity. And to do that, what do I need to create? I want to create an entity to keep all these three information in one thing. I want all the answers to come up. I'm not going to say who said who because I, uh, you're, I can see who is answering. For everyone else, it's anonymous, okay? And uh, we're going to um, uh, go through it. So my question is, I know you answered. I'm going to answer again because I'm getting some very irrelevant answers. So I'm going to clarify one more time and ask you to answer it again. Okay. Uh, I want to package these three information in one entity. So I, when I have a student, a student comes with Abram Simpson, the student number and GPA and I don't <clears throat> have to look for every and each as I go through so so I want everything to be packaged in one thing to do that what do I create one more time now the answers are getting better Somebody said one. I have no idea what that, that even means. Oh, selected <laughs> the answers from the others. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> now I'll, I'll go back over here and, and just take a look at it. So uh, we learned that that is actually a structure. So just to remember, it's something we call a structure. So if I want to create a structure to get information for a user, what do I need to do is to first have something, a header file that can tell me what a student is. So what I will do, I will create a header file and I'll call that header file student.c, student.c. And when I have a, oh, that's not a header file. Sometimes I say something and I do something else. Uh, I want a header file, so let me correct this. Uh, 
So if I want to have a header file, an empty header file needs something. What does an empty header file need? To make it useless, useful. <laughs> what do I need to add as soon as I create uh, a header file? What do I need to add before I think what I'm supposed to write? I see that none of you remembers what the actually one person did. Thank you. And to the person goes five percent for the for the first test midterm. So I'm going to give that to to the person who uh, to actually answered it correctly. But one person answered correctly down to this point and time's up so the answer is safeguards we need to add compilation safeguards number six okay so oops i forgot to remember who who answered it <laughs> okay. could you please tell me who was it let me look at the name okay i wish it was chong uh it was chong right chong was it you John, you said safeguards, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So you have 5% for your first test. Claim it after I mark the test. Anyway, so yeah, so compilation safeguards. So compilation safeguards, how do we do come? And many of you knew what it is. Many of you wrote, if not define, if not define one. And, and only one person actually named it properly. So that's what we're going to use. So compilation safeguards, we're going to say hashtag if not defined and i'll put stds because i'm at the school of data science and yada 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 and then the name of the header file all capital student underline h and i copy the top one and paste it and replace the bottom with define so <clears throat> and i mentioned whenever you write a header file before without even thinking you add the safeguards so here all the safeguards compilation safeguards compilation safeguards now you can actually start thinking what we want to do what we want to do is to create a structure for the student so anywhere we want to write anything about a student I can include this thing and a student information is going to come in so a student for from what I see over here it has <clears throat> a name it has uh, uh, a student number and it has a GPA. So three things it has. And I'm going to create that one. So struct student. And in here, I'm going to mention struct student. And I'm going to mention name. So character name. And the name, I'll put the longest name that I've seen. It was around 50. So I'll put 61 for 60 characters then i'm going to have an integer student number and i'm going to have a double for uh, the gpa and that ladies and gentlemen represents a student for me so now when i want to actually read the information uh, and pass it uh, and, and get it from the file one by one that's how i'm supposed to do it are we okay with this Oh, I actually put it for a response. So you're typing yes. <laughs> My perhaps. <laughs> I love the perhaps one. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. I'm going to change it to that one. Uh, Sorry for mentioning again. Are you recording? Yes, I am. Thank you. It's being recorded, uh, but not in big blue button as usual. <laughs> Yes, it's recording. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah. So, all right. Now, 
to actually read the information what I need to do is to be able to read the file to read the file what you do you copy the, the thing over here and as if user wants to enter that into the screen so I'm gonna write the tester for myself uh, this one hmm. okay so I'll save this alt F a I'm gonna say um, a example for a UI example for console user interface dot C so why is it giving me this the end idea I can have or not would you like to normalize the endings yes sure yeah I don't know save anyway so uh, so I don't want this anymore I'm just gonna take it off I don't want it so if I want to get the now I need that Emily's uh, help over there she put uh, there you go CRT secure no warnings so I'll copy that over there I'm gonna say define all right now I want to try it so in here I'm gonna say int main I want to test it and see if it works or not so return zero and what I'm gonna do in here is going into your name or I can actually bring the student it doesn't make any difference so I'm gonna say over here include student okay so I have the student here now so in here I'm gonna say student student uh, uh, structure struct student uh, s now I want to read this so I'm gonna say scanf so in here I'm just gonna do a prompt because I want to test it so I'm gonna say printf I'm just gonna show a prompt to know that I'm about to enter so in here I'm gonna say scanf first I need to read so let's actually divide this like this to see what are we dealing with so this is the student record that I'm about to read so first of all I have to keep reading until I hit the comma so I'm gonna say read this string up to and not including comma and then pass comma so that's gonna pick up the name then after that I have to get an integer for student ID that's an integer for student ID and then I'm gonna get a float over double for the uh, for the uh, what should we call it um, um, uh, for the GPA uh, and uh, uh, then that's it so after this what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say s dot name that's where the name goes to address of s dot uh, student number address of s dot GPA okay and see if I can actually read it from the screen I'm gonna just copy and paste it now to print it I'm just gonna say print student I wanna print a student so let me just create a, a source file over here add new item uh, so that's uh, student dot C so uh, for that one I'm gonna let me bring this over here so I need to read a student uh, I need to print a student so I'm gonna say void PRN student student and in here I'm gonna say struct student s and I'm gonna write this function in student.c which includes standard input output so include standard input output dot H and I'm gonna start printing the student over here how do I do that uh, any format that we want so uh, and this doesn't know what a student is so I have to include student over here so include student and I don't need to worry if this the includes are getting repeated by mistake because I have safeguards so now I'm gonna say uh, printf something like name is set to percent s go to new line and uh, and then student number if you if you if you feel what I'm teaching is gobbledygook what I'm talking is gobbledygook stop me and tell me 
to correct myself, okay? And in here is GPA and percent point one LF. And what I'm printing is S dot name, S dot student number, and S dot GPA. Okay, so that's my print student thingy. So um, I don't uh, have to rewrite it over and over. So now in here in my program, I'm going to say printf student. S. Oh, no, not printf. Uh, PRN uh, student, and I'm going to print S and see if it works or not. I'm going to copy this. Oh, it went to Alice. Copy this. Sorry. I'm going to copy that and run the program. I have errors. Uh, what is it? Unresolved. Oh, what? Student.h, where is my student.h? Student.h has the header file. Why it tells me I have unresolved PR in student? What the? Unresolved is not a is a reference in function main. One unresolved signal. Object specified more than once. Let me see what's going on here. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Just a second, let me see what did I do. Uh, struct student s, that's student.h, student.h has the if not defined define, and end if, that's struct student over there. What is going on here? Rebuild. Unresolved is so I am doing something wrong in here. In function main. Int main void. Let me pause this. This is interesting. This is continue recording. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, copy this, copy, and come over here and paste it. So it essentially pastes exactly what it was in a file, but in entry on the, uh, on the keyboard. And I hit enter, and I'll take a look at it to see if the values are read properly. The first one is Abraham Simpson, correct? The second one is the, that one, correct? And the GPA is 3.899. Everything looks good. And I print the values out and the values are printed and they look just fine. Um, uh, are we okay with this reading? <laughs> All right, forget about that uh, structure thing. Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened. I have to go through it and see. I've made a mistake somewhere. So I don't know. Uh, when, when, when you are presenting, your eyes doesn't see. I'll find out and I'll let you know. Uh, so that's that. Um, there we. Go. I think I know what happened. I think I know what happened because when I added student dot h over here, I think that student dot h that I added, I added a source file, then I renamed it it's possible that it actually compiles it, compile it because I renamed it. Probably if I add it again, it's not going to think, but we'll find out in a break. I think I know what went wrong, but we'll find out. Okay, so now, now that I scanf is actually reading, and, I, and on purpose, by the way, I made a mistake in here. So you see my test went okay on console, but then I'm going to actually convert this to a file and see what happens. The name of the file is student.csv. I know how to actually open and create the file, and I'm going to do it. So in here, I'm going to say uh, file, 
FPTR, file asterisk FPTR, and I'm going to make that one equal to F open of student students dot comma separated value, and I'm going to open this one for reading. And obviously, immediately, I'm going to say F close FPTR just to make sure that the, the file is closed. Now, to make this thing read from the file, what I will do is uh, instead of scanf, I'm going to say file scanf and I'm going to put the FPTR over here or let's call it file. file. So as you see, nothing is changed with the logic that I have to read and display. The only difference is that instead of console, I'm asking to read from a file. And when I run the, 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 the program, it opens the file. And because this one is, um, well, anyways, it, it opens the file, uh, students.csv for reading. And then it uh, uh, tries to read from the file and print the values. And as you see, everything is printed and life is beautiful. Okay, so that's that. Um, it actually read properly. I have... Uh, named uh, Abram, uh, Abram Simpson and student uh, number and name and everything. I do not need to prompt anything anymore because it's reading from the file. So running it one more time, we'll see that it actually read the information from the file and it perfectly went through. Are we okay with this? Now, what I want to try is to see what I want to try if to see if I read two of them back to back, will it still work or not? And we will see there are going to be a little bit of bug over there. Okay, let's take a look at this. To check and see if I get two records repeatedly, is it it's okay or not? I'm going to just copy that part and do it twice. So I'm going to read it once printed and read it for a second time and print it. So I'll run it. The scanner will read the first one and print it. That's Abram Simpson and 3.9 something, something, something. Uh, did I go to new line? I don't think I went to new line in printing. No, let me put a new line in here and run it again. Stop. And I'm going to even make it better. I'm going to say printf. Um, that's okay. So let's run it one more time. So it prints that one and goes to the new line. Now it wants to get the second one. So it reads the first one. It kind of looks okay, but there is something strange happening over here. You see, it says uh, backslash n Alice Crick. So when I actually run it, you'll see name Alice is coming to new, name, new line now. Abram over there was printed perfectly, but Alice is coming to the next line. So the second read did not work properly. Do we understand this? Okay, now let's see why actually this is happening. To see why this is happening, we have to take a look at what the file looks like in reality. What the file looks like in reality is something like this. So when the file is being opened, it's being read, the student.csv file looks something like this. So uh, content, real, content of student.students.csv. Um, as really is in file. Let's put it this way, okay? So if I actually want to see what is in file, this is what the student.csv looks in, in file. So it, it's the name and then it goes to new line and then name and goes to new line and then name and it continues, right? So this is what the file looks like. It's the name of the first record. It's the first record and then it goes to new line and the second record and then it goes to new line and it's the third record and it keeps going on. And I'm going to put over here three dots as we know that it's going to go on. Do we understand this? 
Now let's walk through the reading and see what happens and walk through it really. If you rock, walk through the, the, the file reading over here, what we see over here is this. Take a look. We are saying read s.name, read everything and stop at comma. So it reads everything and stops at comma. So that is read. Okay? So Abram is read over here and comes over here. Then skip the comma. So the comma, so let's actually just to see what happens, I'm going to copy this over here so you see exactly what happens. So this is what it was and this is what when the read happens. So this is read. Now name over here will be Abram Simpson. Then after this, one comma is skipped. One comma is skipped. Oops. One comma will be skipped. Then one integer will be read. So one integer will be read. Then the comma is skipped. Comma is skipped. One double will be read. One double will be read. What, what is the next character to be read from here? What is the next character to be read from here? I want everybody to understand what's going on. So like right now, like six of you are answering and keep going. What is the next character to be read? Okay, do we all understand that the next character to be read is... Do we all understand that the next character to be read is actually new line? Because of this fact, <clears throat> when the next reading is happening at line 25, when the next reading is happening at line 25, name starts reading. But in here I'm saying read up to comma, read everything up to comma and stop. The very first thing that it's reading is actually backslash n, and then it stops over here. So name is not Alice Click anymore, it's new line Alex Click. And because of that, when you print it, Alex Click jumps to the new line. And therefore, our reading is incorrect. Do we understand this? All right. So to fix this problem, there are two choices. Number one, <clears throat> what I can do is just to say, because it's a backslash n, right? I can simply say over here, skip the backslash n. And in here I can say, skip the backslash n. If I say something like this, then what happens? Going back to what we read over here. Going back to what we read over here is that it actually reads this and stops at comma, skips the comma, skips the comma, reads the integer, skips the comma, reads the double, and now skips the new line. And now the next thing that's going to pick up will be Alex Lake. So if I run this program now, you will see that the two things are read and it's working perfectly. There is a slight problem over here though. The slight problem happens with this. In some systems, in some systems, new line is not only backslash n. New line is backslash r backslash n. Don't ask me why, because in some systems, new line means from end of the line jump to the beginning of the line. In some systems, it's jumping from the end of the line coming to the beginning of the that's backslash n but in some other systems backslash n means just new line which means it just comes down it doesn't go to the beginning so new line just means this in those systems it says first go to the beginning that's backslash r then come to new line that's why those systems are backslash r 
backslash n. Because of that fact, this code may not work everywhere. It works on this computer, but in another system that newline is r and n, this is not going to work because it tries to skip backslash r, which is not backslash n, therefore scanf stops. Do we understand this? Because of that fact, instead of sk skipping the backslash n, it's always better to flush. And we already have the code for flush in our utils. And we actually implemented the one for the file too. So the flush key for the file, it works exactly like the flush for the regular one, but for a, uh, uh, for, for, but in a file. So essentially you are saying, keep reading until you get to backslash n and character per character from the file. So now, instead of, uh, to be safe, instead of actually putting the value in here with a backslash n, it's better to here say, flush key exactly like I do with regular reading but from the file and I'm gonna say f flush key over here again from the file and now when I read the program it's gonna work the exact same way and as you see the uh, codes are written are we okay with this Oh, Greg's answer from so-so changed. Yes, I'm happy, but still Nicole and David are, are the saying so-so. Okay, so now that we have done this, we are ready to actually create our function. And for that, I'm going to risk it, and I'm going to do the thing again for that student thingy that didn't work. really pissed me off. Let me just uh, uh, go back in here and see what the heck just happened. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring back... Uh, header file I'm going to say add existing item it's going to be a header file that I'm adding and I'm going to add student.h and student.h of mine is now a header file and it is if not defined student yada 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 uh, define it and end if and that's that I'll save it okay and um, then I'm going to come back over here and bring my student.c, add existing item. I'm going to say student.c, I'm going to bring student.c in, and my student.c has the read thingy in it, and it's including student.h over there, which is very fine. Um, so that's that. Now I'm going to go back to my program in here and say include. student.h and remove the student from here and this one from here and this one from here try it one more time if it doesn't work then I'm gonna go back and it worked so <laughs> uh, do you know just what happened why this time work and the other one I was like shocked why is it not working the reason was that, if you recall, I named student.c, uh, student.h, student.c by mistake at the beginning. Then I renamed, I clicked on it and renamed this thing by h. Because it was added as a source file and I renamed it as .h, so essentially I told to compiler that this uh, file of mine, although it's .h, but it's a source C file, compile it. So what happened is that it's as if in my code I write in, in Linux, I write G++ student.h and then student.c. You never do that. You only put the C one because header files are included. You never put header files in a compile line. But by first adding it to the source files and then renaming it to H, Compiler thought that this is actually a source file and started compiling it. And when it compiled it, uh, um, structures became redundant, became duplicated. And that's what the problem was. So I just removed it and added back to solu solution to their proper places. And now everything's okay. Are we okay with this? <laughs>
Sorry, I was baffled because I saw everything is correct, but it's not working. So it kind of pissed me off now. Um, but finally, we found out. Yeah, there's, there is one thing that you need to always realize. No matter how strange the error is, the problem is always with you, not the compiler. <laughs> Remember that. The problem is always with you and not the compiler. Okay? So, totally get it it happens to us like literally every day i know so so just be happy i am programming for 30 years and still happened to me and i was shocked what the heck happened right and the what you saw right now have never happened to me ever in my entire life it was the first time but yeah but sorry but i actually felt good about it oh yeah th th exactly you need to feel good about it and understand that's the reason that i code live because i want problems happen to me so you can see that it is in everybody's life and and things happen that even programmers that program for 20 years they do something that they never happened to them and it comes back and bites them but yeah Anyways, <clears throat> so that's that. So now that we have done this, we are ready to actually convert this to a file. So this reading the file of mine, I can now come to student and I can actually say, uh, give me a student. So struct student, <clears throat> get student. But I have to tell from where. So in here, I have to say file f uh, file uh, all capital and I put over here file so I have to <clears throat> input file something like that so I have to say get the student from the file <clears throat> now I can actually write the code for this thing in student.h in student.c so in in student.c of mine I'm gonna come over here oh that's I already did it in student.c by mistake so I'll put this thing in student.h that's get student and now you see remember that I told you never include a header file inside another header file now I need to do it because file over here is something that this header file doesn't understand therefore I have to say include stand uh, input output dot h so the compiler knows file is actually something that is defined standard input output so that's that so let's go back to student in here. Now I can actually bring the code from my implementation, which is this one. Actually, code like this. And put it right in here and send the student out. So it's going to be input. And at the end, say return <coughs> S. Uh, are we okay with this? So the question is that, uh, Azad, go ahead. You said no. Explain again, please. Okay. <clears throat> what is the return type of PR in a student, Azad? Uh, nothing. Beautiful. If I had something like this, what is the return type of get int? Uh, integer value. Integer. So it's returning the value. Is that correct? Yes. Because I packaged everything in one entity, now I can make that one entity that is a student. It is actually what we call a compound type because this type is a type that is a mix of three different types, correct? I can say get student returns a student. It's exactly like get int returning an int. When I, I when I created the get int, I'm going to explain it anyway to the end. When I created the get int, I created the value, set it to zero, received the value, and returned it. When I created the get student, I created the student, set it to zero, got it, and return it. So it's the exact same thing that I did, okay? Now the question is, 
can somebody tell me how do I know that I got to the end of the file how can I know that I got to the end of the file how can I make sure that I can uh, detect that <clears throat> can anybody tell me <coughs> How can I detect that? Because usually I, I do scanf is equal to 3 over here, and if that returns 3 for me, I'm successful. But the thing is that I have no access to the return of scanf because it's returning a student over here, correct? So the trick is over here to make sure I can tell something back to the uh, uh, caller program that hey student was not read so how can I do that I have to somehow send the message back in the student how do I how can I do that first I'm gonna write a function that tells me if the student structure of mine is a, an empty one and it's very simple it can return an integer so I can say int and I say is empty for example and in here I'm gonna say student Oh, sorry, struct student s. And in here, I can check something. For example, I can check to see if the student number is zero. So I'm going to say if s dot student number is equal to zero, then I have to return true. So in here, I'm going to say int ret is false. It means, oh, sorry, is zero. And in here, I'm going to say now ret is 1. So in here, I'm going to say return ret. So this is empty of mine is going to tell if the student is empty if student number is 0. Why didn't I just I check the student number to be 0 outside? Because then I forget because student has three different attributes. How do I know? which one for me was the flag for the student to be empty because I didn't know I wrote a function for myself not to uh, not to have to remember it so whenever I say is empty student it's gonna check it with the standard thing that I set right now to see if the student is empty or not so is empty essentially tells me if the student is empty or not are we okay with this So now that I have done that, all I need to do is to actually set my student to empty. So in here, I'm going to say if, if the scanf of mine over here is not equal to 3, it means I didn't read the three things over here. It means scanf failed. It means I'm at the end of the file. So now in here, I'm going to say s.studentNumber is 0 okay set empty okay so we don't know still how to write set empty but because we don't know I'm gonna write it like this so I'm setting the student to empty and then everything's gonna be returned and done yada 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 I have nothing to worry about okay so <clears throat> um, and in here I'm gonna say else flush the key otherwise if it failed then I do not need to flush the key if scanners fails then who cares what is backslash and afterwards or not so I only flush the key if I successfully read this uh, student otherwise I won't do it so now that this is happening I can actually go back to my main in here and I can actually use my functions uh, and I forgot to actually add this to my student.h so now student.h it has a print student it has a get student and it has an is empty student so this is what my student is and let's go through it and use our code for it so I have a student module and I have a file that I open for a student and I want to print all the students in this file so what do I do I'm gonna say while oh actually do not while because still I don't know if uh, I have to read the first thing first so in here I'm gonna say student struct student s and I'm gonna set it to empty 
and then I'm going to say do s equals to get student so that's going to get the student and in here I'm going to say now that I get the student why is it giving me an error too few arguments Oh, file. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I had to pass the file. I'm reading it from file. So get student from the file. And then I'm going to say if not is empty the student, then PRN student S. And I can say printf something like some dashes to separate the records just for beautifying it. And at the end, I'm going to say keep going like that while not is empty the student. So now it's going to read one by one. And as soon as the student is not read anymore, it will stop. So <clears throat> let's run the program. First run it as whole and see what happens. Oh, what happened in here? Uh, uh, error list output. Copy which file is student.c, student.c. Oh, I didn't have that one. Okay, I'll have it now. So define, that's that one. Let's compile it. Control F7 compiles just this file. And flush key undefined assuming extern. Which one is undefined? F flush keys. Oh, so I have to include my utils over here. Include utils.h to get the f flush key because we don't know what it is control f7 so this file is fine and now let's run it control f5 and as you see now everything oh <laughs> i didn't go to new life uh, i didn't i thought i'd have fixed that one but it didn't go to new line let me just fix it so student.c over here print i need to go to new line backslash n backslash n save come back here and in here I can actually do something like this I can say printf um, uh, what do I do I'm gonna say printf um, percent D like that and I'm gonna put over here I plus one show the row number for the student uh, it's not a, oh uh, and I need integer i integer i set to zero and in here uh, now I can say plus plus i instead of i plus one so it adds one and go through it and then I go to new line so I'm gonna do like that go to new line it makes it kind of presentable so now if I run it I have students read, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have 14 students, and each one of them are printed from the file, and I have everything. Are we okay with this? Now let's walk through and see what happens. So, <clears throat> so walking through this, we can actually see how the file is being read and everything is set properly. Um, there is... Uh, 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 something that uh, like like we can actually have a function written to get a student from the, the console so you can write the program like that and then uh, add it to the file later on we'll explain how it happens but <clears throat> um, before we do this <clears throat> what I'm gonna do in here is to actually create an array of students now we actually printed this but what if I wanted to sort the student based on student number if I wanted to do that then how actually uh, like if I or if I want to find out which one has the highest GPS GPS <laughs> GPA which one could have the highest GPA so first of all in here I'm gonna say read test so it's gonna be B uh, student read test read test dot C <clears throat> so we bring back uh, the PRG over here and now I'm gonna actually 
for example, read and show which one had the highest GPU. <laughs> highest GPA. GPS, GPU. I want to see what is the other GP that I'm going to actually... <laughs> Anyways, brain doesn't work anymore. Sorry, I, I'm teaching like four hours straight back to back at the end of the class. Brain plays cuckoo. So in here, I'm going to say student... The maximum number of students say it's 100, not more than 100, so that's what we're going to do. <coughs> and I'm going to say equal to 0. I cannot say just equal to 0. I'm going to say equal to an array that has, so the first element is 0 and it sets everything to 0 because a structure by itself is uh, needs curly bracket. This is how to set everything to 0. Okay, so this first sets the first structure to zero and the rest will be set because the C does that. So it's maximum of 100 students. So in here it's not only is empty, so in here I'm going to say uh, this I++, I can't do it anymore. I have to say I++ and I++ has to happen at the end, I++. And it's the exact same thing. So I'm going to say SI in here. And SI uh, is, actually we don't need to, we're not going to print anything in here, we're just reading. So I'm going to take everything out in here and do like that. And in here, I'm going to say while not is empty SI++ plus plus and remove this one out. So what happens is that it passes what's read inside and if and then adds one to adds one to i therefore it checks for the for the is empty and returns it so this reads all the students and i will have actually the number of students in him so in here i'm going to say uh, int number of records and in here i've got to say number of records is actually i because that's the number that is that is returned now for the next one i can have a for loop i can say four I set to zero, I list the number of records, and I plus plus. Now I can actually find the maximum minimum and all the good stuff. So uh, I can actually go through the students one by one. So I'm going to have two students in here set. So I'm going to say struct student struct student max and min. So I have two students max and min. Um, and that's set to zero, and this one is set to zero too. So <coughs> while it's uh, so, I'm gonna uh, go through the records. So the very if if i is zero, i is zero. I'm gonna say uh, max is set to min is set to uh, s i which means the first one so if the first one <clears throat> if it's the first one minimum maximum is the first one and please appreciate the fact that when i do an assignment between structures everything inside the structure is copied from one to another i don't need to worry about using something a string copy and things like that when you have something inside the structure and you copy everything compiler copies the whole bytes of the right one into the left one therefore everything gets copied you have an exact double copy of the other one you don't need to check for null termination or anything because whatever you have left becomes an exact copy of right so that's min max and everything is set in here else for else in here I'm gonna write <coughs> if uh, uh, max dot why is it not showing oh it's because of that so in here I'm gonna say if max dot GPA is less than s i dot gpa then max becomes si and if min dot gpa is greater than si dot gpa now min becomes si okay 
and now I can show all the uh, students so list all the students and because I don't want to do it over there I'm gonna do it here so in here I'm gonna say uh, void list students and for list students I'm gonna uh, put um, uh, struct student s array an integer size whatever the size is and I'm gonna say for integer i set to zero i less than size of the array and i plus plus and I can print I can print use PR and student but it's better to write it in a in one row now so in here I'm gonna say printf printf <coughs> in here I'm gonna put percent d 3d and a dash 3d and a dash and percent uh, say 40s s left justified <coughs> and then and then uh, uh, add space and then prep percent a d for student number and let's say we're gonna put nine spaces for that and <coughs> Uh, percent 3.1 for each GPA because that's 3.1 it, it's the GPA that's what it is <coughs> now in here I'm gonna say s i dot name <coughs> sorry row first so i plus one name s i dot uh, student number and s i dot GPA and I'll go to new line and I can show a little title at the top to make it beautiful too so I'm gonna say printf that's row so I'm gonna say row and then um, uh, I have a dash so that's the dash that goes over there so in here I'm gonna say uh, student name you can actually put one space over here so I'm gonna say uh, uh, student 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 name and it's gonna be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 15 16 17 18 19 20 and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and uh, <coughs> 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and uh, space and one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine so uh, student number one two three four five and g space gpa hopefully that's right if it's not we're gonna fix it and i'm gonna copy that and paste it right over here and go to the beginning and put dashes all the way through and we have ourselves a, a list hopefully that's going to actually sh work properly i don't know list students and then uh, we'll continue with the rest so i have the list students uh, i put it in a header file by mistake copy i'm going to take it out put it in the cpp c file not cpp sorry c file so now I have list students over that is listing the students as is so it's beautiful now we'll come down over here now after it's done I'm gonna say list students and I'm gonna say s and number of records and then in here I'm gonna say uh, printf uh, highest GPA and go to new line and in here I can say PRN student and I put max and printf lowest GPA GPA go to new line and say PRN PRN student min and close the file the point is 
what I did over here when you look at the logic of what I have written is nothing but finding not no difference but finding the, the minimum and, and maximum of some integers in an array they are all exactly the same the, that's what packaging into a structure is that's why it's very very good so now what happens in here I'm gonna run right down to this point and I'm gonna come right to number of records so run to cursor over here and as you see now actually number of records becomes 15 and hopefully that is 15 so if I bring this thing over here and take a look at it oh it says so it's actually 14 I made a mistake so I have to stop I have to correct that so it said 15 uh, let's come back over here 15 so it has to be minus 1 we'll fix that stop so let's run it one more time run to cursor so it comes right down to here and it reads all the records right to number 14 now and now one by one it's gonna go through it and test it so it's gonna come right in here and checks to see if, uh, for if because it's the first one it's gonna set minimum and maximum to that one from second one then it kind of jumps jump over here and check the GPA that's 1.88 the one is 3 3 point yada 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 nothing happens this one is 3.88 that one is 1.8 so that's wrong so it's gonna uh, fix the minimum and as of that point the minimum and maximum is gonna get updated so min and max will have the values then it's gonna list the students and when we look at it this is the list of the students um, gotta fix the thing but not bad overall looking at it like this so uh, all the students student number and GPAs are listed and now it comes to the to the next one and it's gonna say that highest GPA is this and lowest GPA is that and now we have highest GPA GPA is uh, Lisa Simpson uh, that is four and uh, Maud Flanders has 1.7 which the lowest GPA in the whole thing and that brings gives you a complete example of how all the structures and everything can work uh, within a file going through uh, information and again it is just an expansion of the so, so instead of a student in regular things we had an, an array of integers and that we had that array of integers and then integer max and min and we did the exact same thing with minimum and maximum here no difference the only difference is that I use their GPA for their maximum and minimum you, you could have used the student number you could have ordered by name or anything like that the fact is it doesn't matter how many things you have in a structure they act exactly like a regular variable but a big one are we okay with this So the next thing you need to do when I post these things up uh, I'm, I'm just gonna push it right now please go and walk through it step by step and understand exactly what it does and it's very possible there are some bugs in this program that you have to fix check it go through it see what it is so when you come the next day uh, we're gonna go and talk about all these things I want you to know exactly what structures and files are for the next day that you're coming in we have a hands-on teaching on the, in the lab and I want your attention and your knowledge on this part before you come uh, any questions before we continue before I before we leave any questions any questions any questions <laughs> all right okay so thank you very much for coming and um, um, I'm gonna post this actually right now to make sure that I'm not gonna forget it so let's go to the repository please pause the recording as soon as possible